Finding the perfect location for your film can be difficult. Getting permission to film there can also be just as, if not more difficult. We're covering both of those things today on Filmmaking for News. As you are planning your first or next film project, you may be looking for a handful of locations and you may be thinking it's going to be impossible to either find the right location for your film or you may be questioning if it's even possible to get permission to film there. If you've been following along with this new season of Filmmaking for Noobs and are pushing yourself to create your first or next film after this season is over, you may still be a few months away from actually needing to secure locations and start looking for locations, but hopefully the information in this episode will help you to start identifying what you need to look for in a good location, start making a list of possibilities, also knowing what is available to you if you're still writing your film. That's a very important thing to keep in mind, especially if you're working on a limited budget, to know what is available, what is actually possible to obtain as far as locations go. And the information in this episode may even help you to figure out what you need to adjust slightly in your film and your script in order to make a very you know low budget first film work within your means. We'll be looking at some examples on how to obtain all sorts of locations, including parks, hospitals, planes, houses, schools, churches, libraries, office space, and warehouses. Many other types of locations that I'm not necessarily gonna talk about today, uh, maybe something like a, a cafe, a restaurant, a department store, a grocery store, anything else. Many of these locations can often be found simply by going around and scouting out locations in your town, getting in touch with the owner or the manager or talking to someone at the store there or at the business and letting them know what you're doing and simply asking for permission to film there. For most of these businesses, they may not want you filming there during business hours, but if you just have a short scene or a couple short scenes, you can do it in a couple hours or a few hours um, and it's something that you can maybe do in the morning before they open or late at night after they've closed. Uh, they might be more willing to work with you on that. Uh, sometimes there might be a small fee involved or they might charge you something for their time or an employee's time to be there and open up for you and close up after you. But regardless, many different types of locations, you can often just simply reach out to them, contact them, look around your town and ask them if you can film there, negotiate terms with them, and if they say no, move on and find another one. Um, but I am gonna be covering in this episode a number of examples of different types of locations locations that I have filmed in, how I went about getting permission to film there or finding those locations because some of them are pretty tricky to find, some of them can be hard to get permission for. And so I hope that what you hear in this episode uh, will really give you some insight and some ideas and information on how to find the locations that you're looking for. Um, I hope that maybe you can apply whatever information I share with you about different locations that I've used to any other locations that you're looking for. Even if you're not looking for exactly the same type of location that I talk about, hopefully this will give you some ideas as far as how you can kind of think outside the box and broaden your search and find ways to find the location that you're looking for. And I'll also share a number of different tips and advice as far as how to get permission to film in these different locations when you're looking for a location that may not be quite as simple as just simply asking a business owner if you can film there. So here are some examples of various places I've filmed. This is all based on the last 17 years of filmmaking experience that I have and many, many hundreds of different locations that I have filmed in. Before diving into specific locations, I will start by saying that if you live in or are filming in a very film heavy area or city, such as Vancouver, Toronto, New York, Los Angeles, Atlanta, you're probably gonna find that many places have a normal fee that they charge for venue rentals. And then if you wanna film in their venue, they often have a another type of fee or rate that is two to three times higher than their normal rate, uh, which they charge to film. So that's because in very film heavy areas. First of all, all the film stuff is kind of a burden and annoying to businesses. And secondly, these businesses have found a way to make an extra stream of revenue by charging a lot higher rate for filmmaking purposes because they know that the big shows that come to town are willing to pay that and able to pay that. Um, but sometimes it's really not cool because they apply the same rate evenly to even the low budget independent filmmaker who is just kind of trying to make their own little short film project and you can't really afford the rates that they charge. Although if you you are in a small town or somewhere that is not really considered a film center where there's not a lot of filmmaking activity or maybe a couple hours away from a film center, it is sometimes a little bit easier to find either cheap or free locations that you can use simply because people are often more willing to help out and they also are just really excited about being part of a film because that doesn't happen often in their area or to them. Also be sure to keep in mind and look up any film permit requirements in your area. Film permits may be issued by the 
the city, maybe issued by some other jurisdiction, the county, the state, the province, whatever your jurisdiction is, and some of them might have multiple jurisdictions issuing film permits for the same area. So definitely be sure to look into all of those requirements. Some places don't require film permits at all, which is really nice, but the places that do require film permits, those film offices are often also able to help you secure some different types of locations as well, or maybe able to recommend different locations to you as well as contact information for those locations. So definitely be sure to look into that and check that out as well and to make sure that you're you know not going to get your equipment confiscated because that would not be fun. So we shall begin. One of the first projects that I ever produced was a TV series back in 2005 and 2006 uh, and a lot of it was set in a high school. At the time I was living and filming in St. Louis, Missouri and so there's not a lot of film stuff going on there and so I was able to reach out to the middle school that I had attended a few years earlier and ask them if we could rent the facility during the summer to use for filming. I did emphasize the fact that I used to go to that middle school, which I think might have helped with the decision a little bit. And I also emphasize the fact that we were a very, very small, low budget production. We're just trying to make something cool and good and we don't have tons of money to spend. So along with all that, I was also partnered with a nonprofit organization in order to produce the series that I was making. And so because of that, the school was able to give us a much lower discounted rate that they usually apply to nonprofit organizations whenever nonprofits want to rent out their facility. The thing I learned through that is that there are many different government or state operated facilities which do have different levels of rental rates based on whether or not you are a for-profit or non-profit company or organization. And so if you do have the ability to partner with uh, some sort of non-profit or do your first couple of projects under the umbrella of a non-profit organization, it definitely can help you as far as getting better rates for uh, using different facilities like that, whether schools or other government owned or operated facilities. So for that middle school that we rented, I think we paid about $7 an hour to rent an entire wing of the school, which included a number of different classrooms and hallways. It was a really great deal. Um, however, I've also found that in Vancouver, the school rate for rentals is nowhere near $7 an hour. It's extremely prohibitive uh, for very small budget projects. So be aware of that. The takeaway is to maybe partner with a nonprofit organization for your first one or two or couple projects so that you can take advantage of those nonprofit discounts. In 2009, I needed another high school for the movie Logan. We ended up using three different high schools for all of our high school scenes. We used one high school for the exterior scenes and two different high schools for the interior scenes. The high school that we primarily used for the interior scene was actually, uh, I had known someone who was on staff there and they were able to help get us in the door and use that for free. The other high school that we used for the exterior scenes, uh, we also had someone on the crew who knew some of the staff really well and was able to get us into that school for free. But the third high school that we had to use uh, simply because we couldn't find what we were looking for at either of the other two high schools. Um, that one, we had to pay some money to use, but we only used it for a day or two and it was not too expensive. The takeaway is to make friends with people in your community and utilize those connections to make use of whatever facilities or buildings that those people may have access to, but obviously not in a super tacky way. While we're talking about locations, one thing to keep in mind while scouting locations, especially exterior locations, is to be very conscious of what sort of things you hear around you which may contribute to issues with recording sound. For example, one of the reasons why we used so many different schools for filming Logan uh, was because we had originally planned on using the football field at the primary school we were using for our exterior scenes. But on the day that we arrived, we realized it's right next to a busy interstate and it was really loud. Thankfully, we had some connections to another high school about half an hour down the road and we were able to call in some favors and they allowed us to move all of our stuff and gear and, and people over there that same day and start filming at that location instead. In 2008, I directed my first feature film called The Scarf and we required a couple different planes to film in as a couple of our sets. I wasn't looking for any large, wide body passenger commercial aircraft, uh, just really small, tiny planes, something that would hopefully be a little bit easier to find. In the United States, the FAA does have an online registry of every plane registered in the country. And you have content information for the owners of the plane and it is all open to the public for free and easy to access. So what I did was I searched through that database. I found five or six different planes that were of a very similar model and era of the plane that we were looking for and I sent a letter to each of the owners of those planes. In the letter I did describe a little bit about the film 
uh, what we're hoping to accomplish with the plane, what the scene entails, a little bit about the story, and asking them if we could film in their plane. I made sure to emphasize in the letter that we were a very small, low budget project as well. Because I did include some information about the story and the scene in the letter, which also uh, mentioned a real life historical figure that was closely tied to the scene, one of the people that I sent the letter to actually owned this real life historical figure's plane and it was part of his private collection in his private little museum that he had. So he had called me and offered to allow us to use that plane, which was awesome that we got to use the actual plane that was tied to this historical figure that we had mentioned in the scene. And he was simply excited about the project because of that connection and he was just excited to be involved in a film project and so he allowed us to come down to his little private museum on a little airstrip in a small town and film in his plane for free. Uh, it was really cool. For the other plane that I needed, I called around to a number of different small airports, uh, different flight training schools, very small local air carriers, just seeing if anyone would allow us to film in one of their planes. I did end up finding a local air carrier that was based out of the Vancouver International Airport and they had a little seven passenger plane that they allowed us to film in. They charged us like $500 for the entire day of filming, um, which was a little bit higher than we were wanting to pay because it was a very, very low budget project, but obviously a very good rate for getting something like that to film in. They even offered to let us join them for a short haul round trip cargo flight just to get some in-flight footage. So that was kind of cool. The takeaway is think outside the box. Don't call up United Airlines asking to film in one of their planes because that's not gonna happen. Instead, look for smaller companies or businesses that may be more willing to help out, especially local businesses or private owners who may be able to help you out with what you're looking for. It's important to know that if you are trying to film inside of an airplane, typically Hollywood, big budget movies, big budget TV shows, they're gonna build or rent an airplane set. It's gonna be very, very expensive and very costly to do. That's probably something that most low budget indie filmmakers cannot afford to do. And if you're looking to film in a like an actual wide body aircraft and you're looking for the real deal, even if you could secure an actual wide body aircraft, I can guarantee you that is gonna be an absolute nightmare trying to get your equipment and your crew in and out of the plane and try to work within those small little aisles and the small spaces between the seats. The great thing about using an airplane set is that it has wild walls, which means they are walls that can easily be removed, and it also has wildable chairs and other fixtures, meaning that you can take chairs out rather quickly in order to get a camera in somewhere, and the aisles are usually a bit wider for a dolly or for Steadicam or whatever you're using for your camera support. So that said, it is pretty much the industry norm to use a really expensive and costly airplane set, whether built or rented from somewhere and shipped in, but that probably isn't within the means for most low budget indie filmmakers. And so there are definitely other ways to go about finding what you need. Uh, it just takes a lot of creativity and thinking outside the box. In 2006, I required a hospital for a scene in a series that I was filming in 2009 for the movie Logan. I also required a hospital room. And in 2020, I again required a hospital room for a short film called Blue. Once again, typically big budget TV shows and movies are going to be either building a hospital set or they're gonna be renting a an old dilapidated abandoned building that used to be used as a hospital and filling it with a bunch of rented hospital gack to make it look like an actual hospital. That's probably not within the means of many really low budget indie filmmakers or anyone who's just starting out. It definitely wasn't within my means for these particular projects where I required a hospital. And so here are a couple things that I did in order to find a hospital to film in. First of all, calling up an active real life working hospital uh, they are probably not going to allow you to film there. Even if they did allow you to film there, it'd probably be really expensive unless, of course, you're in a really, really, really small town and a really, really small hospital and they're just bored out of their minds and don't have much going on. Then you might strike gold there. But otherwise, you're probably not going to be able to film in a real hospital, so it's probably not worth attempting unless you really think that there's a good chance that you can. So in 2006, when I had a hospital scene, I rented a hospital bed from a hospital bed rental company, and I set up a fake hospital room inside of a small house that I had access to. In 2009, for the movie Logan, uh, I needed a hospital room again, and so instead of calling up hospitals, I contacted uh, different seniors' homes and different uh, like seniors' care homes, and I found a seniors' care home that had rooms that looked very similar to 
hospital rooms. They even had a double room where there were two different hospital beds with a, a separating partition, which really gave it that hospital room look. They allowed us to film in one of their rooms and a hallway for the entire day for just a few hundred dollars. And again in 2020 on the short film Blue, which I dissect in another episode of Filmmaking for Noobs, I once again rented a hospital bed and some other hospital supplies and equipment and built my own hospital set in my living room. The takeaway, again, is get creative. Think outside the box. Don't go directly to the source. Instead, there are many other smaller, cheaper options available that will allow you to achieve the same thing or create your own. There are many companies out there that rent everything you could ever want inside of a hospital room. Search for medical supplies companies, search for medical supply rental companies, search for hospital bed rentals, you'll find it. On a number of locations, I needed to film in a park and typically small parks, city parks, local parks, they're a little bit easier to uh, get permission to film in. If the jurisdiction that you're in does require film permits, then usually you can go through the film permit office to get that permission and it usually doesn't cost much extra, if any, to use a small local or city owned park. Um, if you're working in a jurisdiction that doesn't require film permits, then in my experience, the parks that I wanted to use were either really cheap or free in order to get permission from the city to use that park for filming. Um, but it just depends on your area. However, if you are wanting to film in a larger, say, state park or provincial park, that does get a bit trickier. You have to contact the appropriate office and jurisdiction for that, and there's usually a much higher fee associated with that. Uh, for example, in the area that I'm in, even though we can get a, a local or city-owned park included with our film permit fee, if we want to use a provincial park, it's going to cost a few hundred dollars per day extra at the minimum just for uh, the park usage fee. The takeaway is just call around, ask for permission, and be prepared to spend a few dollars or fill out some paperwork. If you're looking for houses to film in, aside from asking family and friends, here are a few different things that you can try to find houses. These have worked well for me in the past. First of all, try posting something on social media. I have found some houses that way. People will come across that and reach out and let you know that they have a house available to you. Uh, sometimes they might not charge you anything because they just want to be part of the filmmaking process, or other times they'll definitely charge you something. You can also browse around on Airbnb or other sites like that and find different homes in your area that are being rented out. Definitely do ask permission to film in the house don't just rent it and go there and film because you have the rental be courteous and let them know that you would like to film there ask them if that's okay with them uh, they'll probably still charge you something if not a little bit more but that's just what it takes to do filmmaking websites like that are really helpful because it means that those people are already willing to make their house available to random strangers for a price so it's a little bit simpler to reach out to them and ask them if you can film in their house you can also try asking around to friends and family not just for their houses but asking them if they can put the word out and if they know of anyone that has a house available that they might be willing to let you use to film as well. If you are looking for a church to film in and you don't happen to know anyone that is part of that church, uh, then most churches do have their contact information online and it's pretty easy to give them a call, send them an email, or even just show up uh, during office hours and ask someone in the office. Some churches do often rent out their buildings to films and so they do have some protocols in place and policies and so if you walk into the office they'll know exactly what to tell you and then give you the information that they need to give you for how to go about booking their facility to film in. Uh, other churches uh, may not have ever done anything with filming before but they may just be excited that you asked or other churches may just say no and that's okay because there's plenty of churches out there that you can go to the next one and ask them instead. While we are speaking about churches, if you are looking for a library to film in, many public libraries are going to be costly and prohibitive to film in. Uh, they may have long open business hours and it may be very difficult to allow them to let you in either during business hours and they may not be willing to let you in after hours. Um, unless you have a lot to spend. However, a number of churches and many schools also have libraries as well, and some of them look pretty similar to public libraries. So if you reach out to a school or a church that has a library, they may be a little bit more willing to work with you to let you film in their library. They may not cost quite as much, and they, their hours may not be quite as restrictive. In 2016, I was looking for a warehouse to use for a short film called Excelsior, and in 2020, I required a warehouse again for no internet. On both occasions, I did look up commercial real estate listings online and I reached out to different real estate agents asking if we could possibly uh, just use the building for a couple days to film in. The first time for Excelsior, we did work through the real estate agent for owners who were trying to lease the building out and the owners were kind of temporarily using the building for storing some things. And so because of all that, we did have to pay a little bit of money in order to rent the warehouse for a weekend, um, but it was still doable, obtainable. In the case of no internet, the content information that I found ended up going directly to the owner and developer of a brand new industrial complex um, with a whole bunch of different warehouses that were 
not even being used yet. Uh, and so I reached out to him and he was willing to uh, work with us to help us out to let us use the warehouse for free in exchange for providing some drone footage of his facility. The takeaway is to use any resources that you can to find the information that you're looking for, to find locations that you're looking for. Don't be afraid to contact real estate agents and reach out to them and go through them. Some of them may not even reply because they know that you're not really gonna provide them the business that they're looking for, but some of them are willing to help and work with you on that. But also reach out to owners or developers who have new projects that they They've just completed and the other takeaway is don't be afraid to work on a barter system and to offer some sort of service in exchange for letting them use their facility if you are looking for office space to film in and you don't really know anyone that has access to office space there are a number of co-working companies out there uh, they can reach out to one big one that comes to mind is a company called Regis they have lots of different office space locations around the world that they often rent to on a daily weekly or monthly basis and it's very possible to reach out to them and ask if you can use their space for a day or two or however long you need it for filming. I mean, it is gonna cost money because that's how they make money, that's part of their business, but it is much simpler and easier route to go sometimes than reaching out to real estate agents or working with landlords and things like that. Oftentimes, larger cities also have a number of different uh, locally owned co-working spaces that operate in the exact same way. And so definitely check into that, look for those co-working spaces around your area and reach out to the owners or managers of those spaces. If they're locally owned, they might also be willing to work with you and offer you some discounts. Now, of course, I'm not gonna list through every single type of location that you could possibly need to film in. Many of these different types of locations that I've already talked about, many of those same rules or whatever may still apply to many other types of locations. So hopefully, this this has helped you to just have a number of different ideas on how to go about finding and looking for locations and how to reach out to the locations and ask for permission to film there. Um, there are many other different types of locations as well. In another episode of Filmmaking for Noobs, I am going to cover specifically how to get permission to film on a public road or even shut down a public road or even a highway in order to make your movie. I hope that this episode has opened up your world to locations, how to find locations, the different resources that are available to you just at the touch of your fingers on the web, and how to go about getting permission to use those locations. If you did find this useful or helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. Come back next week for more content. Thanks for watching.